Hello, my name's Ian. Welcome back to the Grow Zone. I'm starting a mushroom farm. Come with me, I'll try and start from the beginning. It's been a while since my last video. See the container behind me there. But the journey started a little bit further away from where the container landed. With this beautiful plot here, a little bit overgrown now, but you can see the remains of my plinths. Beautifully leveled. This was going to be the length of my container. This was going to be the rear. Leveled with a laser. Me and my friend who owns the farm did this. Took us about two or three days. And then there was going to be another 12 foot container going here, making a beautiful L shape. My container along this section and there. 12 foot, six meter uh, um, across this one, making a lovely space for the communal grow to sit and we're gonna build a deck and a washing station. Um, that was all fantastic. The container was being delivered. That was all organized. The truck knew where to put it. And then, uh, the driver arrived and we took him for a tour of the site. He took one look at it and shook his head and said, I can't put it there. I can't drive there. I can't turn here. I can't even get out of the driveway. So he was then stuck on the lane up to the farm here, two kilometers back to the next junction. Um, I'll add some footage in so you can see the fun that uh, went down. So for those of you who have seen my channel before, I've been growing using hydroponics for some years now. And I have a web shop, my own range of LED lights, which I still sell on Amazon, Urban Grow, full spectrum LEDs, which I'll be fitting out in this container for some working light and some light for the mushrooms to grow. So that's all gonna continue. But I've decided to make the move into mushroom farming after doing a little bit in a grow tent at home. You can see those videos uh, up on the card or down below. Some lion's mane, some shiitake, some gourmet mushrooms targeted at restaurants and some private sales. And my decision has been to go in to a larger scale farm situation and upgrade to a container. Let's have a little tour and I'll show you around. Lots of things to consider when building a container farm from scratch, especially when you haven't done it before. So I'm learning as I go here, so please feel free to pipe in on the comments below. Uh, I need all the help I can get, all the advice. Um, I am teaming up with um, some guys up in Stockholm who are already doing this as a business, so that's gonna be fun. More details on that soon when the, when the deal's finalized. So they have been through a build out of one of these containers before. This is an insulated reefer, high cube, so they've done all the troubleshooting, I hope, so they can help me along the way with ventilation and shelving and uh, lighting and running power and water and um, all the bits and pieces that need to happen to make this grow mushrooms. Keep it humid, keep airflow, keep oxygen, keep CO2 under control. 
all the good bits and pieces. I'll show you what I've got so far. I'll take you through what I've got and what I think is gonna work, what I think might not. And I'd love your advice again, please reach out. Let's start with the shelving. This was my first thought. I went down the stainless steel route and they're quite hard to come by. I ended up picking these up. Uh, one, two, three, four, and then five down the back. Different, slightly different type. Good. I like the construction of them. And I like the fact that they are on wheels, although the uh, corrugated floor is not fantastic. And also the container isn't fully leveled yet, which we will get to at some point. The farm owner here, my friend and I have a plan to lift it. Maybe you can see here, where's a good example of the lamination that's slightly coming off. So these are chipboard maybe, but they're laminated. I think these will last for a good amount of time, but it is gonna be high humid conditions in here. But I do think they're good to wheel out and be able to pressure wash and clean. The bags I'm working with are a kilogram each. And I think I can get one, two, three, four, five across, maybe both sides. So call it 10 per shelf. All right, moving down the back of the container, I recently picked up these guys. They were really easy to put together. I really like the system actually. And again, I think they're gonna be fantastic for being able to pressure wash, pull out. They're nice and light to move. I mentioned that I'd got these to a friend and his concern was immediately with oxygen flow. So as you can see, they're solid shelf. And if I were to have mushrooms on each of these levels, uh, the concern being that they're not getting enough flow through the top of the bags as the mushrooms are starting to fruit. What do you guys think about that? How can I mitigate that? Maybe I can have fans or extra airflow in, in the back here to, to move air out. Yeah, but I think they're, they're a good purchase. Yeah, moving back to the front, I will at some point need to partition this front section. I have stainless steel tables, which are 165 long. So I think I will allocate the first two meters, maybe two and a half, and then put a wall in somewhere around here, maybe in between these shelves. I've looked into some steel framing for partitioning walls. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do with the corrugation. I'd quite like to leave it because maybe you've seen my other videos of pressure washing it and air blasting it and it's very, very handy to keep clean. And I'll be able to wash it very easily if this floor remains. So if I were to partition this section here, it would leave me a couple of meters of working space for harvesting. And um, yeah, sorting out mushrooms and all the power humidifier, light switches and timers and bits and pieces and water can come into this partition section. Then I can have a door coming through here somewhere into the fruiting chamber, into the mushrooms. So yeah, I'll zoom out a bit. So pretty much where the, just past where the sunlight hits it now, there'll be a wall and then humidifier, table on this side perhaps some working space. Ventilation is a huge one. Now this is a big run. This is a 40 foot container, which is 12.2 meters. Ventilation needs to run from the partition section at the front there, all the way along, and be pulled out the back. I'd like to have a tube coming, if I can, using the existing chiller unit. Above here there's one, two, three fans. That's where those brackets are. Those brackets are holding the mesh on there. And just below that, there's three fans. One of them is broken, I know. It was blocked off, I've been up there. And two of them are still functioning, but I would like to swap those out for my extractors. So piping coming in along, and then maybe sort of hovering halfway above the wall maybe there and then maybe a longer one on this side for extraction. And I think I would really like to use those existing brackets to mount my extraction fans, filter box, and then ventilation tubing, pulling it out of there, out the back. What do you guys think? Let me know. Another thing down the back here while I'm here, 
is to put a hole in the side at some point to have some airflow coming in, some oxygen coming in as it cycles, as it gets extracted, then air has to come back in from somewhere. And also down the other end here, I think will be handy. I suppose in the fruiting side of the partition, maybe here and on the other side. And then again, there'll be a bunch of inlets inside this partition section for various fans and venting. As for lighting, I'll just be using these ceiling mounts. My LED strips can be linked up to 50 times on one power cord. So I'll run a daisy chain, doop, 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 snaking along and back to a power supply in the partition room here and they'll be timed just on 12 on 12 off. Yeah, be sure to check out the link for the LEDs down below. They're great for mushroom rooms and they're fantastic for the high humid conditions. IP65 rated and the power cords are even higher. Fridges are the next thing. Something I didn't consider actually, but I've just negotiated a different price. I won an auction, but it didn't meet the reserve. But I rang the auctioneer up and he gave me a deal on taking both the units and they are two meters high. So there'll be big units right up to the top here, one and two, they're both stainless steel and fingers crossed they are working. Final piece of the pipe, well, not, not by any means, but another piece is a power in. Recommendations on this are very welcome. A part of me thinks that I can use that existing three phase that from the shore plug and come in through the back and then run power all the way along boom, and have a box here with plugs and other bits and pieces. And I also have to consider water in for the big humidifier I've got coming. It should be capable of Make uh, of um, producing enough humidity for 120 square meters, so it's a it's a big unit. So just come around the back of the container quickly, and then I'll sign off. If you want to follow me on this journey, please like and subscribe to this video. It's going to be lots of learning curves for me, and I'm willing to take it on. Grow some mushrooms. Yeah. So a couple of things here. This is a Thermo King. They're pretty standard unit. Seems like it was out of commission in 2011, this container. Sure plug here. Ah, uh, yeah. Has been snipped. But still. Mm. They gave me the three phase connector, so that's nice. And the chili unit has been dinged at some point. Uh, inside this unit is looking pretty clean. I understand these are relatively easy to have service and find parts for. I might try and do that because of course they can heat as well. As I mentioned before, there's three fans, one, two, three, underneath this service hatch here. And the one on the left is broken. It was blocked off with a piece of cardboard and just the wires have just been cut. But the um, frames that they're sitting on, I think can be reused in some fashion and then pull air out of the back here. You use this existing structure which can be removed but then I'm in the world of building partition walls at the back as well a lot of the times apparently it's the compressor that goes um, anyone knows about these Thermo Kings once used to belong to a container handle I'm not sure who they are that's not where I bought it from and as you can see after the eventful afternoon having it delivered truck driver said do you want to get some plinths underneath it so i ran to where i'd leveled out and grabbed as many as i could but as you can see it's not ideal and maybe you can get an idea it's not very level it's close but it's not ideal so at some point i'd like to fix that and you can see here one of the plinths cracked it's a lot of load on this point and, uh, yeah not ideal he said to me as he was driving off you should probably put a few more under the larger openings which i did and yeah i could move these when i put them there so as it settled the weight's actually resting on these as well now maybe this one as well no so not this one this one's still free which is good but it's a bit of a span 
from the back there up to the full 12 meters at the front. It is what it is and we'll try and level it in the future. That's it from me now in the shipping container on a hot summer's day here in southern Sweden. Yeah, I hope you want to join me on this journey and uh, yeah, wish me luck. See you in the next one. All right, bye.